The Advent Podcast is a daily devotional podcast intended to mute the noise of the holiday season by diving deep into God's Word and renewing our love for the great hymns and carols of faith. Join us daily to light the Advent candles, sing a carol, read scripture, share a reflection, and pray together. This can be done in the car, on the treadmill, or sitting around your family's Advent wreath. You can even partner this podcast with your own family traditions. Now here's Dr. Sterling Allen with today's message. Well, friends, it's that time again. Let's gather around the Advent wreath to light a candle. We light the first candle for hope. Let's turn in our Bibles to Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which is the 10th book of the New Testament. We're in chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I'll be reading from the New International Version, but any version you may have will work. As a reminder, we are continuing to use this same verse all during the first week of Advent. So let's continue to dive deep into the Word over the next few days. Hear now the Word of the Lord. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above the rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in the waiting, the watching, the hoping, the longing, the sorrow, the sighing, the rejoicing. Speak to us by your word in these Advent days and walk with us until your holy light comes. Amen. Can I tell you a secret? I feel like I must admit something to you all. It's a little embarrassing. Until February of this year, I had never been to a popular music concert. I've been to plenty of operas, recitals, symphony concerts, and jazz clubs, but never a stadium show. And to be honest, I never had a desire to go to one, but my girls both love music and Jennifer likes attending concerts. In celebration of Jennifer being a Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Scholarship recipient while at Texas A&M University, she was invited to attend the Rodeo and Kenny Chesney concert where they honored previous scholarship recipients. Two weeks before our planned concert, I was a seriously lousy dad, and I felt like I needed to do something to make up for being completely inconsiderate to Hannah Grace. So when I saw her favorite artist, Walker Hayes, was playing the rodeo, I purchased tickets from a pastor friend who properly ridiculed me over seeing Walker Hayes. After the two concerts at Houston's Energy Stadium, I can say without a shed of doubt, the concert experience was absolutely overwhelming. I hated it. It wasn't just Walker Hayes' singing, but that was part of it. And it wasn't just the overwhelming volume of music and the blinding lights, though both were horrible. It was the entire experience. A little over a thousand people listen to this podcast a day, and most of you don't know me. But here's a little insight. I don't like being in crowded environments. I don't like loud music. I don't like bright lights. I don't like overpriced tickets. I don't like overpriced food and drinks. I don't like a lack of legroom, and I don't like my rear end squeezed into an uncomfortable plastic seat surrounded by immodestly dressed people. Both concerts, they were just awful. The only way I made it through the concert were shooter's earplugs 
outer ear protection, and wearing sunglasses. I was a hot mess. To be honest, it was shockingly similar to how we live our lives in the secular world. We are blinded by flashing lights, attracting us to things that don't align with God's desire for us. Everything at the concert was so loud. I couldn't hear the good for all of the noise and bad. The same can be said about everyday life. The world today is emotionally overwhelming. It's not a wonder that if people want a spiritual breakthrough, they often experience it on retreat. When people want to converse with God in prayer, they close their eyes to shut out the outside world. It's in the darkness and silence that we can renew our hope in God through rare moments of intimacy with our Creator. St. John of the Cross, a Spanish mystic poet and theologian, called this breakthrough intimacy with God a dark night of the soul. Once you shut out the light and noise of the world, you can experience a remarkable closeness to God. When you feel empty and broken, it's time to close your eyes, breathe, and open yourself to a real moment with God. For me, my dark night meant I slowed down. I turned off the noise of this world, shielded myself from the blazing light of distraction for the secular world, and I laid down my burdens and baggage. That stuff I've been hauling around for too long. Once I did that and really connected with God, I felt relieved and rejuvenated ready to accept my responsibility as both a disciple and devoted child of God. No matter what you're dealing with, once you experience your dark night of the soul, you can begin to experience the hope found in a relationship with Christ Jesus. This Advent season, hit pause. Hit mute. Get close to God. It'll change your life, and you'll be filled with hope. Come to Jesus and be filled. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, master of both the light and the darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who have so much to do and seek quiet spaces to hear your voice each day, we who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy seek the joy of your presence. We are your people walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Whisper.